the fable of the free house no one can keep. A basically true story about evil wizards with strange financial powers that make important papers disappear and the two nice people who were in the wrong. Once upon a time, there was a couple named Lee and Deborah who lived in a tiny little apartment in the village. The village was in an expensive land with art and music and dance and unusual foods like poached lobster and fried zucchini flowers in a tangy lemon zest. This land also had lots of people, dangerous drivers, blaring klaxons, and many, many village idiots. <laughs> Lee and Deborah adopted a child and the three of them could no longer fit into their tiny little apartment in the village. They decided to move to a village that didn't have art and unusual food, but had schools with smart boards and things like trees and green grass and very few village idiots. The couple didn't have much money. Then a bank said, we can loan you the money to move to the house with the trees and the green grass, but the money is going to cost you money. Now just sign your name on every piece of paper we give you and do not ask questions or you will not understand. Now, Lee and Deborah were very creative people who had ideas galore that did not always make money. So they toiled away at silly jobs to make money to pay for the money to live in the house with the trees and the green grass. One day, Lee and Deborah went to work and the work wasn't there. A strong wind called the economy came and swept the work away. Suddenly, there was no money. They heard the wizard Heloc could find money hiding in their house. The wizard Heloc said, I can help you, but you will have to pay more money to get that money. Now just sign your name on every piece of paper we give you and do not ask questions or you will not understand. The winds of the economy continued to blow. Work would come and the winds would blow it away. The wizard Heloc couldn't help, but he told Lee and Deborah about the wizard Refi. The wizard Refi gave them more money that cost money and then said, now just sign your name on every piece of paper we give you and do not ask questions for you will not understand. Work came and went and came and went and came and went until Lee and Deborah could take it no more and they called the bank and they said, we cannot pay. And the bank said, let us tell you about our repayment plan. <laughs> but the repayment plan is a trick to get Lee and Deborah banished to the pit of fees and penalties. No one escapes from the pit of fees and penalties. Desperate, they sought the help of the Lias. The Lias were a guild of necromancers who could work on the dark side or the light side. The Lias said, Lo, oh, you have failed. You are in the wrong. For the bank will come for your house. We cannot save you, but we can protect you. The Lias introduced Lee and Deborah to a very special bank. It had bank in its name, but it wasn't really a bank. It had chapters, but it wasn't a book. It was the Bank of Rutsi. <laughs> Once they entered the Bank of Rutsi, they would not have to pay anything. They just would have to move out of their house one day and live in shame the rest of their lives. <laughs> this upset Lee very much, me and Deborah very much, so they decided to look very carefully at every piece of paper they signed and did not ask questions about and were not supposed to understand, and they understood. Maybe they were not in the wrong. The Bank of Rupsy had a very special court where the banks of America and City and Chase and Rose and Fargo could come before a judge. The judge in the special court of the Bank of Rupsy was named Judge Drain. Seriously, the guy was named Judge Drain, I swear. No lie. And Lee and Deborah and the bank came before Judge Drain and the judge said, show us the note that proves you gave Lee and Deborah money to buy the house in the village with the trees and the green grass. And the bank said, who cares? They have failed. They're in the wrong. And the judge said, I didn't ask you that. Show us the note. Now, the note is a curious thing in this story. No one was sure who had the note or if it even existed. But somehow the note could change everything, if somebody could find it. The bank said, well, uh, so he gave the note to this guy. And uh, there was another guy who was holding the note. And he, he, this guy was like, I don't know, we don't know what we're doing. And they threw their papers up in the air and disappeared. By now, Lee and Deborah were tired of telling their story in the special court. Judge Drain was tired of hearing their story and wanted the bank to pick up all its papers. The Lias were tired of everything. So the bank said, okay, you cannot keep the house, but you can stay until you are done. Lee and Deborah asked, what does it mean to be done? But the bank changed its name and address and no one knows where they are. So now, in shame and glory, Lee and Deborah live in the free house no one can keep. And one day they will leave 
and live happily ever after. <laughs> 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 <laughs>